Hi, welcome to James Miller Lifeology, where you learn to simplify and transform your spirit, mind, and body. My name is James Miller. I'm a licensed psychotherapist and a composer. Thank you so much for tuning in today. Let's get started. If you're anything like me, your health is very important to you. I know you listen to the show for tips to simplify and transform your spirit, mind, and body. Well, I have some great news for you. James Miller Lifeology has partnered with BioOptimizers Nutrition. As an avid nutrition and exercise enthusiast, I thought I knew a lot. But after taking a 12-week health course BioOptimizers offers and implementing their supplements, I noticed a huge difference in my energy and my digestive tract. Since you're a listener of Lifeology Radio, BioOptimizers is offering you the same 12-week course absolutely free. Go to jamesmillerlifeology.com forward slash supplements to take this free course. Here is a sample of what you'd learn. How to get 70% more energy in 30 seconds or less. The ultimate key to high performance, health, and longevity. How to turn the tide against uncontrollable food cravings. How to select the most powerful supplements for you. How to stay lean and trim without sacrifice. The simplest and fastest way to detoxification and great skin. And much, much more. To get access to this awesome health course, simply go to jamesmillerlifeology.com forward slash supplements and sign up today. Once again, visit jamesmillerlifeology.com forward slash supplements or simply go to jamesmillerlifeology.com. I have a great show for you today. I'm going to help you take responsibility for your actions. I'll also be interviewing Dr. Gus Vickery. Dr. Vickery has made it his mission to radically change the way we view health. Today, Gus will share a few key points from his book, Authentic Health, to empower you to embrace new patterns for living and reclaim the good health that's within you. For more information about Dr. Vickery, please visit vickeryfamilymed.com or healthshepherds.com. You may also purchase his book on Amazon or in the previous guests section in the stores at both jamesmillerlifeology.com and lifeology.tv. I have some exciting news. Did you know that I'm on the radio three times a week? You may hear me on the same station on Tuesdays at 1.30 p.m., Fridays at 9.30 a.m., and Saturdays at 12.30 p.m. You may also hear me anytime on iHeartRadio as well as on all the other major podcasting platforms, including iTunes, Google Play, Stitcher, and many others. Simply search for the show name, James Miller Lifeology. Are you struggling today to find your purpose? Has mediocrity set in and you can't imagine doing the same thing for the rest of your life? Are your relationships struggling or you aren't sure how to make long lasting changes in your life? Then today, contact me, James Miller. I will help you recognize the areas in your life that are going really well. And then we'll look at the areas in which you are struggling. We will create actionable solutions to help you create long lasting changes in your life. You don't have to do this alone. Go to my website, jamesmillerlifeology.com and click on the page, work with James. Fill out the form and it will be sent directly to me. Don't let another day go by without finding your way. Your change can start today. Once again, go to my website, jamesmillerlifeology.com and click on the page, work with James. Fill out that form to get started today. One day, all the employees from a large corporation arrived at work. As they entered the foyer, they saw a large sign next to the elevators that read, yesterday, the person who has been hindering your growth in this company passed away. We invite you to join us for the memorial service in the large conference room today at noon. At first, they were all sad for the loss of one of their colleagues, but after a while, they started getting curious to know who it was who had hindered their and their colleagues' growth. The excitement in the conference room was such that security guards were ordered to control the crowd within the room. The more people entered the room, the more the excitement heated up. Everyone thought, who is this person who has hindered my progress? Well, at least he's gone. One by one, the thrilled employees got closer to the coffin. And when they looked inside, they suddenly became speechless. They stood nearby the coffin, shocked and in silence, as if someone had touched the deepest part of their soul. For there was a mirror inside the coffin. Everyone who looked inside of it could see their self. There was also a sign next to the mirror that said, There is only one person who is capable of setting limits to your growth. It is you. You are the only person who can revolutionize your life. You are the only person who can influence your happiness, achieve your goals, and create your own success. Your life does not change when your boss changes, when your friends change, when your partner changes, or when your company changes. Your life changes when you change, when you go beyond your limiting beliefs, when you realize that you are the only one responsible for your life. The most important relationship you can have is the one you have with yourself. Taking responsibility. When we were children, we would often tattletale on our friends or our siblings by telling our parents or an adult what they'd done to us. And sometimes we would get so frustrated that we would just do the same exact thing they did to us. But unfortunately, we were often the one who was disciplined for that. And of course, this made the situation even worse because we felt so justified that we were within our rights to retaliate to that person. Fast forward to your adult self. Do you ever find that you say the words, you made me so mad, or look what you made me do? I didn't have a choice. Those comments are the adult version 
of our younger self. Every time we have that mindset of either retaliating or responding automatically, that is another example of the childhood version coming out in the adult way. It's important for each one of us to understand that just because we've always responded the same way, that we don't have to do that. If we continually respond in the same way by allowing other people or situations to control our responses, unfortunately, we're not taking an opportunity to grow and develop. In every situation we do, it's important to ask ourselves, what am I learning about myself right this second? If you find that somebody says something or does something which hurts your feelings, but you automatically respond out of anger because that's the way you defend yourself, well, unfortunately, you've missed an opportunity to be able to express that hurt in a healthy way, so maybe that person won't do it again. When we allow other people or situations to dictate our response, we are allowing them to control us. Now, it doesn't mean that people do that on purpose, but the situation does cause us to respond in a way that we've always responded. Listen to your word choices today. How do you respond to individuals when you feel triggered? Do you take responsibility for your actions or do you automatically go on autopilot and respond because you feel justified? When we have this awakening or this awareness, it really does put the responsibility back on us to say, am I being true to myself? Am I growing and developing? If you continually respond the same way that you've always responded, unfortunately, that does not demonstrate growth. That demonstrates unhealthy consistency in a negative behavior or a negative pattern. So of course, there's no judgment in this lesson at all because we've all done this at different times. It's just simply allowing you to have an awareness that if you continually respond the same way, you are not going to grow in that area of your life. It's important to look at all areas of our life. What are we doing every day so that we are in charge of our emotions, of our body, of our thoughts, of our nutrition? All of that is a choice we make. The problem is many people don't realize that it is actually a choice because they've done something for so long. And when that happens, we don't realize, or rather we forget, that we have many other choices. In the past, you've heard me use the analogy of a Rubik's Cube. A Rubik's Cube has six different sides. Each situation we engage in, or every thought we have, or every response we have, should be thought of like a Rubik's Cube. There's more than one side to each situation, to each response. But if we have a go-to response or go-to reaction, then unfortunately we're only using one side of that cube. So I'd really like to encourage you today to not be reactive, to take responsibility for your life, to take responsibility for every single thing you do, because the more you recognize that you do have a choice and you always have a choice, you then get to determine how quickly you're going to develop, how fast your life is going to change, and how consistent you're going to be with achieving all of your goals. Did you know I have a YouTube channel? That's actually how Lifeology started. I have well over 155 episodes that I've created specifically for you. I do know that many people struggle with listening to a full 30-minute show. So these episodes are about three minutes long. Each episode will give you a practical tool or technique that you can practice daily to help you simplify and transform your spirit, mind, and body. Simply go to my website, jamesmillerlifeology.com, or go to YouTube and search for my name, James Miller Lifeology. My guest today is family physician, Dr. Gus Vickery, the founder and CEO of Vickery Family Medicine in Asheville, North Carolina, a full-service primary care practice that has received multiple awards for service, quality, and innovation. With extensive experience in the medical field and a passion for healing people, Gus has made it his mission to radically change the way we view health. Today, Gus will share a few key points from his book, Authentic Health, to empower you to embrace new patterns for living and reclaim the good health that's within you. Welcome to my show, Dr. Vickery. Thanks so much, James. It's an honor to be with James Miller of Ifology today. Oh, thank you so much. I really appreciate that. You know, one of the great things about communication nowadays is I know you're in Asheville, North Carolina, and I'm here in Palm Beach. So thank you so much for your time today. I really do appreciate it. Yeah, I I would have actually appreciated coming down to Palm Beach and hanging out there with you. (laughs) You know, I hear that a lot, which I completely understand. (laughs) Well, thank you for joining with us today. You've done an amazing job, obviously, helping people from, from a medical standpoint, but your book itself, Authentic Health, really empowers people to help them look at at perhaps their life in a different way, maybe view things that they didn't recognize that were perhaps a stumbling block for them and you allow it to become a stepping stone. So let's, why don't we jump right into it? Your book, Authentic Health, once again, well, tell us what the summary is of that specific book. Yeah, this book is a, a philosophy of health. Mm-hmm. It, is, it is a manual of health, but it's a philosophy of mm-hmm. health. It's meant to get inside people's minds and inside their hearts. And it's not a, uh, an ed- it is an educational book, but it wasn't written from that style. Sure. It was an extension of 14 years of oh, wow. seeing patients in a primary care clinic and seeing patients from all kinds of perspectives with all kinds of resources, most of whom are dealing with various forms of chronic diseases, both chronic diseases of the mind, as you're mm-hmm. very well sure. aware of, as well 
well as chronic diseases of the body, and we know those two are connected. So mm-hmm. if your body is not metabolically healthy, you're going to have a harder time yes. feeling good mentally. And the same thing, if you're not feeling good mentally, you're going to end up sick metabolically. And so after a number of years of observing this in my practice, because I had naively thought that becoming a family physician meant that I would sew people up and brain <laughs> abscesses and fix broken bones, sure. <laughs> that kind of stuff, and you know, and help people when life broke them in some uh-huh. way. But what had happened um, really underneath uh, everyone's consciousness is we had transitioned from generally a healthy population to becoming a chronically sick population. Mm -hmm. And as I would observe the flow of my office day and realize that not only adults, but children are now coming in, Mm -hmm. manifesting chronic disease issues, both mentally and physically, it hit me that there's just something not right about this. Uh, It doesn't doesn't jive with my understanding of Mm -hmm. human beings and the design of human beings. And not only that, the toolbox I had been equipped with in medical school to understand how you actually reverse disease, cure disease, it didn't apply to this, right? We, mm, we had pharmaceutical models that simply slowed the velocity of a disease. Mm-hmm. And uh, and that just did not seem sufficient to me. Well, I think it also comes back from the disease model as well. You treat the you treat the symptoms, but not necessarily the root, um, which... That's right. And so I think when you, when you really look at some of these chronic diseases, um, well, let me back up. So in psychology, we teach that whatever you perceive to be true determines what you feel. What you feel determines mm-hmm. what your body does. So either it responds in a chemical reaction or responds in a physical action, you know, you're yelling and screaming. So, you know, from my standpoint, the entry point would be the mind or the, the neurological part of it, I suppose. And then yours is going to be perhaps from the external side coming in, um, which helps people understand well, where is where is it breaking down? And so that's right. I, which I think is great because since you are looking more at a preventative standpoint, but not only that, but it's more of what is the person potentially doing in their own life that could be encouraging this disease without even realizing it. That's exactly right. And as I began to figure out that our diets were making us sick Mm -hmm. and and these other factors, stress levels and screen time, I started offering people good advice about that, right? Things Mm -hmm. that they already know and and teach, trying to teach them about nutrition and that you could reverse diabetes. But that's where I realized is that it's not just necessarily understanding what you need to do. There's something deeper going on. And it had to do with the things you teach about a lot of times on your show, internal desire, Mm -hmm mindset, what you believe, yes. right? And, and I began to realize that a lot of people are coming into the healthcare system from a perspective of learned helplessness, mm. that diseases just happen to them. Yes. And that the only hope they have is they might come, there might be a medication that could control yes. it for a period of time. But, but my understanding of people, regardless of our perspective, was that they actually want to be well. Mm -hmm. Right. That a human being has an intrinsic desire to feel good and be well and serve purpose in life. And that so something was seriously amiss. When I put it all together, I wrote this book because I realized that what I wanted to share with people was more than I can share with them in 15 and 20 minute offices. Which is unfortunate because you have have such such wisdom to be able to share. So I'm so glad you wrote this book. Let's go back to the learned helplessness in my field. And I'm sure in your field as well. Learned helplessness is a sense that people are taught that they have, that they don't have a choice. They don't have the ability to make changes for themselves um, that they must rely on someone else. And so since that's happened for so long, the idea of doing something proactive in their life is sometimes lost because they're so used to perhaps taking a medication or having someone else, um, decide for them and they lose their sense of individuality. They lose their sense of, wow, I can make a change today. And that change can start from a small little mind shift uh, to something, a radical lifestyle change as well. Is that the same was, was in your field as well? Yes, it is. And, and, the, and specifically when it comes to my consultations mm-hmm. and someone sitting in front of me, believing that they're helpless to have any, to take any action, to change the disease that they're dealing with, that I'm the only one in the room that sure. has the power to offer something. Whereas most, where we know most of these chronic diseases are not only preventable, they're reversible if sure. you catch them at early enough stages. And as I began to tell people that they, they re- it really changed their mind about it. But it goes deeper than that. And as I teach in the book, in one of the chapters on the willpower, I discuss the deep reward pathway in the brain Mm, and and how the the behaviors that people have become habituated to, you know, most of them are housed in reward activity in the brain. And so there's some euphoria and some dopamine. I'm sure you're well aware of all (laughs) this. I just did a show on that as well. Yeah. Yeah, And and so what they think they're what they think they're battling is themselves, their Uh own willpower, their own character, their own integrity, which leads to shame and guilt and guilt and inability to change. And when they begin to understand a, a basic owner's manual of the mind and that they're really, it's not about their character, right? And it's not that they're deficient Mm -hmm. in willpower. It's that they're dealing with a manipulation deep in their brain that they didn't understand. And as they begin to get empowered over that, 
and they experience what it means to feel good and that they don't have to have a disease in their body, what I would find is from there, the rest of it became easy. Yes. And I think also just helping them understand what does it mean to feel good? Sometimes people have this connotation or this understanding of to feel good means you are this this amazing athlete who has bulging muscles and you look a certain way, but feeling good is going to be different for every single person. So to have that understanding of what does healthy mean? What does feeling good mean? What does success mean? Allows for that person to say, wait a minute, perhaps everything I've thought about maybe it's a little bit different. So I'm so glad that you are able to help them have that awareness to be able to make that change for themselves. Yes. And actually it's interesting because for many people, the feeling good piece, they may never have felt how Mm. good their body and mind could let them feel. So you're trying to sell them on a value proposition they've they've never experienced. Mm. And and the definitions of health haven't helped either because the the traditional medical delivery system, we have failed to inspire people of what it could mean to have good health. We've talked about things like like, oh, you need a better cholesterol score. If yeah. you're diabetic, your hemoglobin A1C, that doesn't inspire sure. anybody, sure. right? Not, not when there's so many competing variables out there that have strong euphoric power in the mm-hmm. human brain. Well, it's simply even just getting like a like on Facebook or getting a new friend and be like, oh my gosh, people yeah. like me. It's just that hit of dopamine that people get so fast that they're going to want to do those instantaneous feel good things as opposed to the long game of let me, let me be mindful of what I eat. Let me be mindful of what I watch. Let me be mindful of how much movement is in my life. Those are the long game, which doesn't necessarily give you that, that really powerful hit of dopamine that people crave because and I guess in this world, everything is, so, is such an instant fix and you get an yeah. instant fix of dopamine. It's like, oh, this is amazing. But then two seconds later, darn, I don't feel <laughs> this way anymore. What do I do now? And yeah. then you keep doing it. So it's, it is really frustrating. <laughs> let's jump into the six steps of your book because these are really good. I don't know if we'll get to all of them today, but let's jump into like, we'll do the first three. The first one is mindset. Tell us about that concept. Yeah. So the, as we were just discussing, I realized that in order to help my patients experience good health and to feel really good, it all started in their mind mm-hmm. because these these habits are long entrenched. Yes. These are these are trained neural pathways, habits of thinking, habits of behaving founded in their belief systems. Mm-hmm. And that if I was going to truly help them, we had to start there and that I had to begin to re- help them reorient and not just reorient, but to actually understand that the brain is plastic. Mm-hmm. as we know, yes, and that they and that they can retrain their yes. thoughts and emotions, that they can begin to take control of those patterns. Um, one of your recent interviews with, I really enjoyed it, Dr. David James, and oh, his, yes, yeah. especially yeah. in hypnosis, and that's what he was speaking to, yes. right? The ability to download new software uh-huh. and, to, to, and to basically kind of, you know, get the software out that is running, that is creating these mindsets of, that are causing you to stay in a, a place mm-hmm. where you're sick, where you can't take the right act, you know, the right actions, whatever those mm-hmm. may be. And so I began teaching people this and I, and then also why I wrote it into the chapter and it's a foundational chapter. I tell people, if you're trying to lose weight, don't skip ahead to the nutritional sure. chapter. It's going <laughs> to happen here in your yes. mind. Yes. Right? And so that's it. Cultivating, telling people that their brain is plastic and they have the power to take control of their thoughts the same way they can take control of everything else, that the key to taking control of their behaviors will be by taking control of their thoughts and also beginning to manage emotional responses. Yes. And and that's the focus of that chapter. And which I think is obviously that's the foundation for anything is just whatever you think to be true determines what you feel. Like I said earlier, determines what you do. So if your mindset continually is very static, in other words, it doesn't change, then you're going to keep doing the same thing. And we know doing the same thing over and over is insanity. (laughs) And so we want to make sure that we're not insane anywhere. The next part is willpower, because this is a really difficult one for people that I think it it sounds difficult, but I think every small step, when you're aware of it, it may not be as difficult as what people think. So please expound on that. So as I alluded to earlier, my mm-hmm. patients thought of willpower as a uh, character trait, right? Yes. Something that some people have and some people don't have, uh, you know, personal disciplines. Mm-hmm. And what I would teach them, of course, is that everybody has willpower, yes, yes. right? It's just where are we applying it? Uh-huh. And we're applying it according to what we desire, what we actually want, mm-hmm. even if what we say we want isn't what we're doing. In the end, we really are choosing what we sure. want in a given moment. And as I would teach them that it's a developable, it is not a character trait. It is a skill that you can develop, that you have a certain amount of it, as we all know. Mm-hmm. So you have to manage it. And it's all about directing it. I would find that people are like, okay, teach me about that. How can I better understand it? And of course, a lot of this happened because I, I would refer people to books that teach these topics very well. Three, sure. 400 pages uh-huh. of just willpower. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and you can imagine what happened, right? Because 
because that person doesn't read books on willpower yes. like I do. Yes. Um, yeah. So that's where they don't I have the willpower for it. <laughs> that's right. So that's where I decided to summarize it. Sure. But will but willpower is also a great area to teach about those competing pathways in the brain between the euphoric reward mm-hmm. system and the well-being yes. prefrontal cortex system yes. and to help them to understand that interplay more well-being less need for dopamine and yes. euphoria right more dopamine euphoria less ability to cultivate well-being yes. and i was able to say your your building of willpower is going to be to engage in activities that just give you well-being like mo- you know and so these are things like gratitude joy mm-hmm. peace love sense of purpose in life and by doing so you'll naturally cultivate cultivate more willpower because the more attached you get to feeling good the more attached you get to having all the energy you need to show up to life because you have things to do that matter to you, the less you're going to give in to behaviors that clearly yes. take your energy and make you feel bad. And they found that a, a model they could buy into, right? Mm-hmm. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to teach you, you can pick from a list of 15 things. All of them cultivate well-being. You pick the one that you know already you like. Mm-hmm. And I'm going to ask you to practice it for 10 or 15 minutes a day. Perfect. And then I'm also going to apply a mindfulness model. So when you come upon craving or urge and to give in to the behaviors you mm-hmm. know you're trying to move away from, we're going to substitute. Right? We're just going to retrain the brain. As soon as you feel it, you're going to take 15 minutes. You're going to go do this other thing. Then you're going to reexamine that craving, craving or urge. You're not going to get all emotional about it. You're yes. going to recognize what this is. And I am sure you've studied these processes, mindfulness applications yes, um, for treatment of OCD, craving mm-hmm. and urges. So I decided that after you get the right mindset, now you know what you want and you desire health and feeling good. Now we're going to teach you how you can begin to retrain the brain specifically so you can adopt the behaviors that are going to lead to that result. I'm sure when people hear this right now, they're like, oh my gosh, this is this is doable. This sounds easy. This sounds, um, this sounds like it's it's something that's that I can do today. You know, one thing I was I was thinking about as you were talking about this is willpower can also manifest itself in a different way. When you say, James, this is who you are, and it's a hard and fast rule versus James, this is a guideline for you. So if I'm walking by a bank, I am James who does not rob banks. That is my nature. That is who I am. So I don't I have created a willpower around that, but it's also a construct of I'm just James who doesn't rob banks. Now, if I'm someone who walks, everyone knows I love chocolate. <laughs> I'm working on that. <laughs> so if I walk down the chocolate aisle, I have to be careful to say, James, you are not someone who eats chocolate. I don't always do well with it, but when I do well, it's very good. However, if I have a guideline that says James eats chocolate three times a week, well, that's a guideline to say, well, then now what does that week restart? So I can eat it Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday. And okay, if I eat chocolate every three times a week, Maybe the, the week started over on Thursday. And so we, the whole concept of that. So I think the other thing is to create a hard and fast rule. You know who you are, and which then allows you to say, well, I have, this is who I am in many other areas. And it just made sense. So now let me take that same concept of this is who I am versus this is a guideline of who I am. Because a guideline, we always break the guideline. And in that guideline, yeah. we're like, oh, okay, well, I, I'm going to do this or do that. And we forget that we have that willpower. We just simply have to move it to something else. I love that because ultimately what you're doing is back to now yes. you are a healthy person mm-hmm. who does these things and you're not that other person and no longer are you battling with yourself. This is just what you do. And that's what I'm trying to tell people. You'll get to that point yes. and it's not as hard as you think. Exactly. And then, yeah. And then you, you'll never battle with this again. Yes. You'll battle with new things, sure. but not this. But, but you know, the other thing about that, though, to piggyback off that is they may battle with it, but then you take that same data like, okay, well, this is something I overcame and I struggled with it, but the same process I'm going to implement. So if I overcame something like that before, the situation may be different today, but the feelings and the cravings and the thoughts are similar. So we now just re-switch, switch that out for tweak it rather for this new scenario, but we do the same process. So my data is if I did it before, I can do it again. And the more you do that, it creates a habit. As we know, it takes 66 times for people to do something to create a habit. So the more often we practice over and over, it now becomes becomes who they are as opposed to a guideline of who they are. Yep, perfect. Unfortunately, our time is almost up. I can't believe it. That we could talk about this all day. Yeah, <laughs> if my listeners would like to find out more information about you, all the amazing things you're doing, and also purchase this book, Authentic Health, where would they find this information online? Okay. 
So the Authentic Health book is available on Amazon.com, BarnesandNoble.com. It actually sometimes is in your local bookstore. Oh, great. You know, it, has, it does have some distribution in stores, and that can be checked. You can also get it through my website at www.healthshepherds.com, and we also have www.drgusvickery.com. Either of those websites lead to the same place. It's also where I have video series and teaching blogs. All of these are free resources that take each of the core concepts of the book and teach them in greater depth for people who want to do a little more discovery. Wonderful. Well, thank you so much, Dr. Gus Vickery. My, my listeners know that if they're not able to find the book anyplace else, just simply go to the previous guests sections in the stores at both websites, jamesmillerlifeology.com or lifeology.tv, and they can find the book there. One more time, Authentic Health, and it will link them directly with Amazon. Thank you so much for a fantastic time today. I really appreciate it. Thank you for letting me be here with James Miller Lifeology. I also want to thank you, the listener, for tuning in today. Please subscribe to this radio show through whichever port you joined with us today, or please go to my website where you may sign up for my free newsletter, watch my YouTube episodes, read the articles I've written specifically for you, or you may enroll in the Lifeology Academy where you can take self-directed courses which will help you simplify and transform your spirit, mind, and body. If you'd like to personally work with me, be a guest on or advertise on this show, simply visit jamesmillerlifeology.com. Be sure to follow me on all social media platforms under the name James Miller Lifeology, except for Twitter, which is James M. Lifeology. Once again, thank you so much for your support and I'll talk to you soon.